Good morning, friends of the Jose Manuel LH Garage channel. Our home microwave has broken down. Everything works, but it doesn't heat up. In other words, the lights turn on, the plate spins, and so on, but it doesn't heat up. This particular microwave is a Samsung model. The model you see here is MG23J5133 at. Okay, I don't know what's wrong with it, and I'm not an expert on microwaves, far from it, but as always, when something breaks and I want to fix it, I go to YouTube and watch 4 or 5 videos. I never watch just one because you always learn different things in the different videos, which is what I always recommend when it comes to mechanics. It's not enough to watch one video, you have to watch several, okay? I've watched several videos and I know what things to check. What I do know above all is that there is a certain risk, and the certain risk is that there is a capacitor that accumulates all the energy, electricity, and high voltage, even if you unplug it for a while. And if it gives you a shock, it can be quite a scare. So, the first thing to do is disassemble the chassis, access the capacitor and discharge it. If you have high voltage gloves, I bought them for the electric motorcycle, all the better. If not, be very careful. So, the first thing to do is disassemble the chassis. In the case of this microwave, use this screw, this screw, this screw and this screw. And since I have these gloves, I'm telling you, it's safer. If not, use kitchen gloves or gloves, wear rubber shoes or whatever, and above all, Make sure the microwave is unplugged. Apparently, the most modern ones have these capacitors, they have an internal resistance that, when you unplug them after a while, the internal resistance of the capacitor itself is responsible for discharging them, but, in any case, to be safe, you have to be sure that it is discharged and we're going to see how to discharge it. First of all, and from there, we're going to do the different tests that I've seen in different videos. Let's see if we can find the problem kit. I hope it's the fuse, which is one of the main reasons why it doesn't heat up and the cheapest to fix. If not, well, we have to keep looking at the different elements, checking them until we find which one is broken. Okay, well, I'm going to put on some rubber shoes. I'm going to put on my electrical gloves and we're going to unscrew the screws on the chassis. Here with my electrical gloves, so come on, let's unscrew. We're going to unscrew one here, so you can see it and then I won't record it and unscrew the next ones. Okay, let's continue. Well, since I'm lazy, what I'm going to do is unscrew them with the screwdriver. This electric one takes less time. Okay, there's a total of one, two, three, four, I have one left. That's it. And in this case, I have this screw here on the side, okay? Well, with the screws on the back and this side, the chassis or casing, whatever you want to call it, comes out. And the first thing we have to do is locate where the capacitor is to discharge it, okay? Things that can break. The mechatronics is one of the things we have to check, which is like the fundamental part of the microwave. The transformer is another thing that could be damaged. Here we have the fuse, which is what I hope is damaged, which is the easiest thing to fix. And the capacitor is there, see, there is the capacitor, so we are going to discharge the capacitor first. To discharge the capacitor, we have to put one of these rubber desiccant in contact, okay? Which is where you take the metal part and touch the chassis and touch one of the terminals. And the same with the other one, okay? With the other screwdriver, we touch the chassis and another of the terminals and that's how it discharges. Come on, I'm going to do it. What happens is that I can't record it. That's how I put it by touching the chassis and each of the terminals and that's how it discharges. What I'm going to do is with a multimeter, 
all give me continuity at one end and the other end of the fuse without disassembling it or anything. If it gives me continuity, it's not the fuse. And if it doesn't give me continuity, it's the fuse. So, here I have the multimeter, okay? I'm going to put it on the continuity scale, which is this one that has the little symbol like this in red, okay? And then you put the probe on one side and the probe on the other side where you want to measure the continuity and if it beeps, it has continuity. In this case, if it beeps, it means the fuse is okay. And now I have it checked for continuity and when the two probes touch, it has to avoid. Okay, the multimeter works, so we're going to do the continuity test on the fuse. I think we've been very lucky. Look, I put the positive probe on one side of the fuse and now the negative probe on the other side. I don't know if you can see it or not, let's see. You can see it. Yes, and it doesn't beep, it should be beeping and it doesn't. So in principle it's the fuse. Let's unscrew the fuse holder. Now let's check the fuse and if it's the fuse, then it's the best thing that could have happened to us because it's the cheapest thing to fix. Nothing, just take out the fuse, okay? Hence the capacitor and the transformer. One leg goes on the transformer, the other leg goes on the capacitor. Transformer and capacitor. Okay, we turn this a little bit in here we have the fuse internally and we're going to see if the wire is burnt and we're going to test them all. Okay, come on. Problem is I'm saying, with one hand and recording with the other. Okay, here we have the fuse and let's see if it's burnt or not. If not, we'll see it. Yes, you see, I see it now. It's all broken. Do you see it? There it is very broken. Okay, and now we check it. We do the continuity test. Okay, first, let's check here to make sure the multimeter works. If I touch it, it should beep. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the other end of the fuse. If the fuse beeps, it's good. And if it doesn't, the fuse isn't good. I touch it, and the fuse doesn't beep. Even though you can physically see that the cable is broken, it doesn't work. Okay. Now I have to take the fuse out of the fuse holder, replace it, reconnect it and that's it. This particular fuse is 5 kilo volts and 700 milliamperes. Well, it's driving me a little crazy to get this fuse out because it can't be removed. Okay, it comes glued, soldered, whatever, and you have to order it complete, okay? Depending on the supplier, it costs between 6 euros and 10 euros. I found one on Amazon for 10 euros that they deliver the next day. The ones that cost 6 euros take almost 10 days. I'm in a hurry, I'll spend the money. I'll leave a link in the video description to buy one of these on Amazon. This one in particular, I insist, is 5000 volts or 5 kV for 0.7 amps or 700 mAms. It comes to the same thing. Okay, so, I'm going to order it from Amazon. I'll leave a link in the video description so you can watch it. When it arrives, it'll be here tomorrow. When it arrives I'll finish the video on how to install it. Okay? After you know something else, we have two fuses in the microwave. This one is high voltage and then one here, you see? And that's the one that usually blows when the switches. The switches, there are three switches here, okay? They fail. If those switches fail, the fuse that usually blows, apparently, in 99% of cases, is this one. Okay, well, I insist, if this fuse is fine, you'd have to check the mechatronics. There are several videos out there that show you how to check the mechatronics, it's not complicated at all. You should also check the transformer, which is pretty simple. And above all, you should check the capacitor, which is also pretty easy to check and, depending on what is broken, you should replace it. I have seen many videos in which, most often, if the microwave works but does not heat up, it is because the high voltage fuse has blown. You have to check exactly what the voltage and amperage of your high voltage fuse is, because they are not all exactly the same. You should order one with the same voltage and amperage. It's that simple. So, I'll get back to the microwave repair video. Yesterday, when I was recording the video, I ordered this fuse and it just arrived on Amazon in less than 24 hours. 
I have it since I ordered it. See? The color of this it is different from the packaging, but the important thing is that it has the same characteristics, which is 700 milliamperes and 5000 W volts, that is, 5000 V well, I'll take it out. This costs around 10 euros. I'll leave a link in the video description to buy it. So, I take it out, I put it in. One goes there, the other goes here. Today I'm not wearing gloves because we already unloaded it and it hasn't been plugged in for more than 24 hours and this capacitor has resistance. Okay, well, let's go, I'll put it in, I'll put the case on, I'll test it and if I heat up a glass of water, then I'll put it in its place. Let's see if it's true. In this case, this fasten that comes here is a little less tight than this original fasten. So this goes in and out too easily. I want it to stay a little more fixed. So with some pliers I'm going to tighten it a little bit so that it has more force. The fuse is already in place, you see, connected there to the transformer and the capacitor. I had a small domestic accident here when I put the diode in and I cut myself there, but hey, there you have it, that's it. I'll put the casing on, test it and if it works, it's fixed. And if it doesn't work, the next thing we'll have to check is the capacitor. But anyway, I think we'll have some luck. Anyway, before installing it on the stove I took a glass to check that it works, to heat up a glass of water. Oops, I'm missing the plate, I'm going to put it in for 2 minutes and see how it comes out. If it comes out hot. This is fixed. I put the glass of water in and let's put it in for 2 minutes. It's getting hot. I'm sorry that I put this in wrong. Now when I'm done I'll fit it in properly. Okay, I'm done. Let's see. Ellipsis dot. Well, it's not getting hot at all. It doesn't heat up at all. So the next thing we need to check is the... Next, we need to check the rest of the components. I don't know if it's the capacitor, which is something wrong or what. Okay. Well, my friend in a hole. Well, now I'm going to do what I should have done before, which is not to trust that since the fuse was broken, it was the fuse. Obviously, fuses break for a reason, it's because something is wrong. So, of course, if you put a good fuse back in, but the one that was wrong is still wrong, it breaks again, and in this case this new one that I got broke again, so I threw 10 euros in the trash for not having bought the other components. So, the next component I'm going to check is the capacitor, which is this one here, as we've already seen, I've already discharged it, as we've seen before, how it discharged. And I'm going to disconnect the diode that goes to one of the terminals, do you see? From the capacitor and the other one here is the one that goes to both the mechatronics and the transformer, which is the one on the right. And I'm going to disconnect them both. I'm going to disconnect them both. Let's see if I can get the capacitor or the condenser out. This capacitor came here like this. Let's see, this capacitor is placed like this, exactly like this. Okay, it's 1.1 microfarads. It has a resistor there and this is it. So, let's see how it's doing. Check to see if the capacitor or the microwave capacitor is good or not. The best thing to do is to use a tester. Not all testers have one, but this is a more or less basic tester. You can buy it on Amazon for 15 euros. And you can get it to measure microfarads. Okay? Since this is one with A, uh, I'm going to put it on the 2's microfarad scale and I have to put, we have to put one of the terminals on one of the, that is, a probe on one of the terminals and the other probe on the terminals and it should give me here on the tester it should give me, 
Uh, the microfarads and it gives me infinity. No matter where I put it, it gives me infinity. So then this capacitor is bad. We have to put one with the same characteristics, okay? Of 1.1 microfarads because this one gives me infinity, it's bad. Okay, that's how easy it is to see if it works or not. If it were working, we put it here at 2 microfarads and I should put one here with 1 microfarad. Okay, it doesn't tell me, it tells me infinity. Okay, ready. Well, we have to buy a new capacitor. I'm going to order it now from Amazon and wait a day or two, however long it takes for it to arrive, and then I'll check the rest of the elements. And I already know that this capacitor was bad and since the capacitor is bad, it makes sense that it would blow the fuse. In other words, this was the source of the problem, right? The fuse. The fuse blew as a result of the capacitor being bad. Well, I have already received the new capacitor that I have already installed. I have checked the difference between this one that was dead and this one that is the new one with the tester, setting it to 2 farads. This one gave me infinity and this one gave me 1 farad, which is what it has. So this one was good. Okay, then just in case I have also checked parts of the mechatronics. We remove the mechatronics from here, okay? And here we have to check that there is continuity between the two poles, which in my case there is, and then between one pole and the chassis there should be no continuity, and between the other pole and the chassis there should be no continuity, which in my case was correct. Then I checked the diode and the diode is checked by removing it and putting a 9 volts battery on one side and on the other side and checking that when you connect the 9 volts battery on one side and on the other side the volts drop. Mine went from 9 in a bit when the battery was there to 8 in a bit. Okay. And what else did I do? And there I checked that there was continuity between these two poles of the transformer and it also gave me good. So, it is supposed that now everything is good in principle. We have already put the fuse on this side and on the other side we have the diode and the other part here where these two cables come. Okay. Since we had removed it, so I am going to put the case on. I am going to put a glass of water and we are going to see if it heats up or not or if this is okay. Let's see what happens. Put to the test on the second attempt after changing the capacitor. I leave you a link for the capacitor in the description of the video and another link also for the fuse on Amazon. Okay. Let's put a glass of water in. Let's close the door. I'm going to put it in for a minute. Okay, and I'm going to give it a moment. It won't explode. I had doubts about whether it was going to explode or not. I'm going to keep you waiting for a minute, so I'll keep recording now. Okay, there are two seconds left, one second. Let's see the cotton test. Let's see this, how is it? And it's hot, yes, sir. It's burning. Perfect. Well, the microwave is working now. The problem was the capacitor. The capacitor caused the fuse to blow. He changed the fuse, but he didn't change the capacitor, so he recharged the new fuse and now I've put in a new fuse again and a new capacitor and it's working perfectly. So, it was the capacitor that was damaged. Well, I hope this video has been useful to you and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, bye, friends.